Hey, what's up everybody? In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at, this is going to be the first part of our Carnival game um, in Fusion 360. All right, so uh, what you're going to have to have for this is you're going to have to make sure you are bringing up your Google Sheet and we should have all of our distances, all of our calculations uh, done. And what we really need to be taking a look at uh, is a couple things. All right, so the first thing is, is looking at this information down here. Okay, and then the second sheet, this is that final calculation. We were taking all of our calculated distances, and then we were basically finding, you know, our data group uh, circle diameter, and then finding out, like, uh, if we wanted 15% of the winners, we're we taking that data group circle uh, diameter, and we're basically multiplying that by 0.15 to figure out what that diameter is going to be for our hole. And then we also need to know where to place that hole. So in our case, our mathematical center, you're going to have to make sure to know that. So make sure you have your uh, your Google Sheets uh, up and running in the background. And then jumping over into Fusion, here's how we can get things started. So top left-hand corner, let's go ahead and let's just pick on the data panel. Let's go into our 2223 LTHS IED project. And let's create a brand new folder. And let's go ahead and call that one Carnival Game. Okay, once we create our Carnival game folder, let's go ahead and double click on it. We can see if there's nothing in here. Um, so now we're basically ready to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit that waffle. Let's just go ahead and retract that, that data panel. And now we're gonna be kind of ready to get things going. All right, so before we kind of get started, <clears throat> more than likely your default setting is gonna be set up in metric. Uh, so we're gonna be doing all this in inches. Uh, that's how we did the entire project <clears throat> with the calculations. And then if we were to actually build a Carnival game, uh, we're going to be using this in, in, in inches. So come here to the top right, you're going to see your little uh, avatar, your little profile up here. So if we go up here to the top right hand corner, you're going to come down and pick on preferences. And once you pick on preferences down here at the bottom, your default units, you might have to hit the fly out next to default units. You're going to be picking on design and you're going to have to make sure to get that switched over okay, to inches. Your manufacturing, you're going to make sure that is switched over to inches. And in your sim simulation and your generative design, okay, we should be seeing some very similar um, <clears throat> uh, units that you see here. So once we do that, let's go ahead and hit OK. And the last thing is, is over here in our browser, you're going to see this little cog wheel, this document settings. Let's hit the flywheel on that and just verify your units are in inches now. If they are not, you're going to have to hit the little pencil icon next to it and switch your unit type over to inches and say OK. Okay, so we're basically ready to kind of get things rolling. All right, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and just do a save at this point, and I'm going to call this my Carnival Game Base. So this is gonna be like the board, all right, that our Carnival Game is gonna be sort of made up of. So what I'm gonna do is, is uh, you know, our first step is, is we need to create a sketch. So coming up here to the top left, let's pick on Create Sketch. And then I'm going to pick on this work plane right here at the bottom. Okay, once we do that, we can see this little uh, icon that's up there. We talked about this last week. That's going to be your uh, origin, okay, your 000. And the first rule when it comes to sketches is that we are always going to create every single sketch from that origin. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come up here. I'm not just going to pick on this rectangle. This is a two-point rectangle. Instead, I'm going to come here to create, go to rectangle, and I'm going to be picking on center rectangle. Okay, the first thing we need to do is come right here to the origin. We can see our little blue O snap happening for us. So we're going to pick one time on that. Then I'm going to move my cursor up and we're going to come up here to the top right hand corner. Now the rectangle in this case, we're going to see it's sort of build, building it from, you know, the center out. All right, and that's going to make a lot more sense. I'm going to keep that origin right there. Okay, so when I'm in this mode right now, it's asking me for um, what my dimension is going to be. In my case, it's going to be from my X dimension. All right, I'm sorry, my Y dimension. So right now it's saying it's like 3.4. All right, so our uh, Y dimension in this case is going to be uh, 21. So I'm going to type in 21.75 and I'm going to hit the tab key. Okay, if I zoom out just a little bit, now it's going to be asking me for my dimension. That's my X dimension. So this would just be 31. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now, once I hit enter, I can see all my geometry now is all black, which means it's fully constrained. If for some reason you do have an issue uh, with the dimensions that you plugged in, just don't forget, make sure you're out of the dimension feature by hitting escape. But you can always just double click on that dimension and you can type in what it needs to be. 
Okay, so in my case, this one needs to be 21.75. I hit enter. Okay, if I need to change anything on here, I could just go ahead, double click it, type in the new dimension. But this is going to be the actual dimensions of our landing zone. And so if you actually measured your paper landing zone that you've been flinging all these attempts at, you're going to see it's 21.75 by 31. Okay, so once I'm done with this, I can now go ahead and come up and hit the green check to finish the sketch. And now what I want to do is come up here and pick on the home icon. It's going to take us into an isometric view. Now at this point, don't forget, you do have the ability to zoom. You have the ability to pan. Okay, so just in case you forget, okay, to zoom, you're going to be scrolling on the scroll wheel. Just don't forget the cursor is going to be telling you we're going to be zooming to or zooming from. So keep that in mind. If for some reason you get this all the way off the page, don't forget you're a double click away from that uh, just by hitting or double clicking the scroll wheel. Okay, it's going to be bringing it back. That's going to be your zoom all. All right, and of course, if you just want to slide and move things over, you can do that with pan. You're going to be holding down on the scroll wheel, okay, and moving the cursor. That's how you can pan that in place. All right, so we are ready to go ahead and make this an actual board. All right, so in our case, I'm going to say the carnival game. We're going to be creating this out of three-quarter inch plywood, just like if we were walking into Home Depot uh, and buying this. So in order to do that, we're going to be coming up here and coming to extrude. All right, we saw the extrusion process last week with the Play-Doh machine and how that all sort of works. So in our case, this uh, square, this rectangle that we're seeing here is kind of like the die at the end of the, the, the Play-Doh press. All right, so now we're going to be pushing extruding material through that die to get what we want. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use extrude. Okay, we can see that recognizes that as a closed loop. So we can go ahead and grab our arrow. We can pull this up. And I'm just going to type in 0.75 because we're using 3 quarter inch plywood and it's 0.75 thickness. So once we're done with that, we can go ahead and hit OK. All right, and now we can see our board is ready to go. Okay, now we need to uh, get our hole that's going to be cut into it. So now I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to pick on this top face of our board. We can see now it's looking directly at the top of it. If you have to use pan, go for it. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at my Google Sheet. All right, <clears throat> so the mathematical center for mine is indicating that this is going to be 1.47 on my X, 0.47 on my Y, which means it's going to be in that top right quadrant. Okay, so jumping back over into Fusion, I'm going to be coming up and gra uh, grabbing my circle. And I'm going to go ahead and keep my circle up here at the top right. All right, depending on what your uh, coordinates are saying, you're going to have to probably kind of nudge this and get this into the right quadrant it needs to be in. But in my case, it's going to be at the top right. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw that circle. All right, so I can see that my circle is blue. And we said the, the whole name of the game in order to fully constrain it is to take all of our uh, blue geometry and make sure it gets turned into black geometry. All right, so I'm going to come up here and go back into my Google Sheet, and I can see that my 15% winner circle, that diameter, and for me is going to be 3.7, and we're just going to go ahead and round it up to 3.76. Okay, so coming back in here to Fusion, I'm going to go ahead and just put my diameter in, okay, just by using dimension, and I'm going to type in 3.76, okay, and so that is my diameter. Coming back here to Google Sheets, my mathematical center, it's saying it's 1.47 on my X and 0.47 on my Y. So jumping back here to Fusion, I now need to come up here, pick on Dimension, and I'm going to go ahead and take care of my uh, X Dimension first. So I'm going to pick my origin and then pick the center of my circle, and I'm just going to pull this straight down. I'm going to pick it to place it, and now I can type in my 1.47 for my X. Okay, and now I'm going to take care of my Y Dimension. So I'm going to pick this origin and then the center point, pull this over, and that needs to be 0.47. Okay, remember that these dimensions are for my data group. You have to remember that you're going to be using your own dimensions from Google Sheets. So make sure you are referencing that. All right, so I can see I have the correct diameter. Okay, I have my uh, X and my Y dimensions. And we can also see that my geometry is no longer blue. Now it's black, which means it's fully constrained. So at this point, I can go ahead and I can finish the sketch. I can come up here and use extrude, and now I'm going to be picking the inside of this circle. That's the profile I want. Okay, once I have that done, I can grab my arrow. I can pull this down. We can see the red highlight, which is indicating to me that that's going to be cutting. And we can see that over here in the operation as well. Okay, so we're going to cut that hole out. We're going to go ahead and say okay. All right, and now my board is basically, you know, I guess the, the base of it, the, the foundation of it is basically done. All right, <clears throat> so if we take a look at this from the top, we can see that uh, my hole is not exactly centered, all right? And it's not going to be centered to the, uh, 
the actual dimensions of the uh, three quarter inch board, it's actually going to be centered to what my data was saying from my own fling machine. All right. And that's why we put it there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the home view. And now we can start, you know, adding materials to this. All right. So I said this is going to be made of, of plywood. All right. So at the top uh, left here in our, uh, our browser, we're going to come here to the very top level. We're going to right click on this. And now we're going to come down here and pick on physical material. Okay, once physical material comes up, we're going to see we have a library. We have all sorts of different folders in here. So plywood, obviously, is a type of wood. So I'm going to come and find my wood folder. I'm going to pick on it. I'm going to scroll down. And when I scroll down, I'm going to see lots and lots of different options for me. You're going to see that plywood comma finish is going to be one of those. All right, we can see it's gray. That's okay. All right, I'm going to show you some ways we can go ahead and get that straightened out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our finished plywood. We're going to drag and then we're going to drop that right on top of that board. We can still see it's gray. That's okay. We can change appearances here in a, in a moment. But for right now, this thing is actually made of finished plywood. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. All right, so just to make sure that we've done this correctly, all right, once we apply a material to it, all right, we can start coming up with things uh, like mass properties. All right, so let's just see what the mass properties are. So if we right click on this at the very top here in the browser, we can now come down and we can pick on properties. And once we pick on properties, we can see we have all sorts of information here, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my scroll bar, pull this down, and I'm going to pick on the physical part of this, scroll down a little bit more, all right, and here's what it's going to tell us. All right, we're going to see that we have the mass, the volume, the density, area, uh, the center of our mass or center of our gravity. Uh, but we can see that um, in our case, the density of uh, finished plywood is about 0.319 ounces per cubic inch. All right, we can see what our total volume is, but it's also going to be telling us what our mass would be. All right, this thing would actually weigh about 158.696 ounces. All right, so this is true engineering software. It's going to tell us what something is, or how much it's going to weigh, or you know what the density of it. Uh, it would tell us all that even before we build it, and that's why you know this is a true piece of engineering software. It's going to give us all that information. So we're going to go ahead and hit close. All right, <clears throat> and um, now we basically have the foundation of our board. All right, so I only want the winners, um, you know, to to actually hit that hole. Um, you know, I don't want this thing to, to hit the board on top and then slide in. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So um, it actually has to hit this hole in order to win. So that means we're going to have to need some sort of a lip that's going to be uh, going around this thing. So here's how this works. We're going to create a sketch. We're going to once again pick the top of this board. Okay, and when we do that, all right, now we can see that outline, that edge of that hole itself. Okay, and so now we can come up here. We can pick on offset. So offset, once we pick it, is going to ask us to select the sketch curve. So I'm gonna just pick the outside edge of this. And when that happens, okay, it's going to be offsetting or making another piece of geometry. Uh, in this case, it's the red one. It's going to be totally parallel to what we just started with, okay, or what we just picked. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this out. And it's gonna be asking me like what my offset position is. Well. I don't want this to be like too crazy, you know, too thick. So I'm just going to say like a quarter of an inch or 0.25. So it's going to offset that new circle, that new geometry 0.25 from my existing geometry, which is showing here in the blue. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, on that. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch and then hit the home icon to put this into the home view. All right. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use extrude and I'm just going to zoom right in here, get our eyes on it. And I'm going to go right in here to uh, this profile. Okay. So this is going to be the inside, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and just pick on that. And now what I can do is, is I can grab the arrow, pull this up, all right? And we're gonna be building sort of a little temporary wall, or not temporary, but it's just gonna be a wall that's going to be making sure that only the bean bags that are actually hitting that hole are actually going to score. All right, nothing's gonna be able to slide in. So I don't know, let's just take a look at what half of an inch is. Uh, maybe we'll go a little bit more than that. Let's go with 0.75. So it's just gonna be sort of this 0.75 barrier, okay, that's going to be doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so now we have that lip around it. All right, <clears throat> so once that lip has been done, now we can go ahead and, um, I don't know, we should probably be indicating people that this is the uh, sort of winter hole. All right, and the best way to do that is actually put text on it so people kind of understand that this is actually what's going to win. All right, so in this case, we're going to be doing something a little bit tricky. This is going to be requesting us uh, to do uh, like an offset work plane. 
or a tangent work plane is what I should be saying. Uh, so work planes are going to be helping us time to time to get uh, the plane that we're going to be starting with in the exact location. So, so far we've just been picking the origin work planes or picking a face that's already there. But now we're going to come out and we're actually going to create our own work plane. So if we, um, <coughs> if we pick here on construct, we can see that tangent plane is one of those options. So I'm going to pick on tangent plane. I'm going to actually pick on this face. All right, and now we can see that that work plane is just hovering right there, okay, on top of that face. I'm liking where that's at, so I'm going to go ahead and say okay. All right, so now I'm actually going to use that plane for something. So I'm going to create a sketch, okay, and I'm going to pick on that new plane, okay, so not a face. I'm going to pick right here on that plane. We can see how it sort of highlights, all right, and now we're looking at it. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom right in here. I'm going to come underneath create and I'm going to find my text box. So this big black A, that's the text. And text is going to require us to create an actual uh, text box. So I'm going to start here up here towards the top left hand corner. I'm going to pick, hold and drag. And I'm now going to go ahead and get that centered. So, you know, the sides of it, make sure, you know, are about the same. Okay. And let's go ahead and just pick that down at the bottom right hand corner. Okay. That's my text box. All right, so I want everybody to know that this is like the sort of winner circle. So I'm going to use this in all caps. I'm going to type in winner. And I'm also going to make sure that this is going to be, um, you know, middle center justification here with my alignment. Okay, and maybe make this bold. And then now we can start adjusting my height. So if I typed in like 0.5, all right, <clears throat> that's going to increase that. All right, so I'm liking the way that this looks. And, you know, we have some other options in here like font and so on. But I'm just going to keep this uh, at Arial. And uh, I don't know, maybe we can go ahead and go with the italicize as well. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to finish that sketch and look at this in the home view. So now we can see that my text is just hovering right there. It's tangent with the actual ring itself. OK, but now what I want to do is uh, I actually want to take that and extrude it, but extrude it to that face. And I want it to be a certain distance. All right, so let's go ahead and come up here. Underneath create, you're going to be seeing something called emboss. So if we pick on emboss, what it's going to be asking us to do first is, is to select our actual sketch profile. So the text itself, okay, is going to be our profile. So I'm going to get right there on the text. We're going to see it's going to go that dark blue. And now it's asking us to pick faces. So I'm going to hit the white select box next to faces. And now I'm going to actually pick on the face of this. All right. And now we can see it's going to wrap that to it. Okay. And then what it's going to be telling us is the depth on this so right now indicating to me it's showing it's like 0 0.079 and i'm just going to say that that's going to be like 0 0.05 okay and you can see how it just sort of decreased how far that text was jumping off of it all right i'm liking to look at that all right so that is going to be a true emboss if we want to engrave we could actually pick on deboss and you can see that red highlight that's indicating to us that that's being cut in but in our case i'm going to go ahead and just say that the effect is going to be emboss it's 0.05 all right, it's going to bring it off that surface. I'm going to say OK. All right, so we have winter. OK, that winter text is right there. Not, It's just in, only in one spot right now. So I want everybody to be able to see this from all different angles. So with that being said, I'm going to come up here to create. And underneath create, you're going to see pattern. Pattern, you're going to have all sorts of different sort of patterns that you can use. But circular pattern is what we're wanting. So I'm going to pick on circular pattern. Okay, the type that we're going to use is not going to be bodies. It's actually going to be a feature. The feature that we're going to be picking is that emboss. So emboss is a feature. I'm going to come right in here and I'm just going to pick right here on top of the text once it highlights. Now, if for some reason it's not wanting to pick, okay, you can always come down here to the timeline. You can pick on that emboss. We can see that that is all in blue. Okay, and now what we're going to do is pick on select next to axis. And we're going to uh, make sure it knows what its axis is in order to duplicate this and, you know, put this in a particular pattern. So it's a circular pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick the inside of our hole. All right. And when we pick the inside of our hole, it's going to know that that's an axis. And I don't want this to be, you know, uh, three of these in the pattern. I want this to actually be four. So I'm going to switch my quantity from three to four. OK, and now I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And once I do that, now that winter is going to be, okay, all throughout that rim, okay, from multiple angles, so people are going to know. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into our home view, <clears throat> all right, and now we can go ahead and we can start making this look the way that we want it to look.
All right, so I'm gonna right click here at the top of our browser, come down to appearance. Okay, and once I pick on appearance, all right, you're once again going to see all sorts of different folders. So we're gonna apply some paint to this. I'm gonna go right into our paint. Okay, and then uh, once we go into paint, we're gonna see all sorts of subfolders. All right, we see glossy, metal flake. This is really kind of up to you, but I don't know, Carnival Games, when I'm thinking about that, they're kind of flashy, um, you know, colorful. So I'm just going to pick on, um, you know, our metal flake. And then once I pick on metal flake, I'm gonna come down, all right, and I can see, you know, we have all sorts of different colors that we can use. Now, just don't forget, if you're seeing an arrow next to it, that means it needs to be downloaded first. All right, so if you're wanting to use a particular type of paint like yellow, if there's an arrow, you have to pick it. Once you pick it, it'll take just a split second. It'll load it in. You'll have it ready to use. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just drag that yellow onto this board, and we can see that everything is now yellow across the entire board. I'm now going to go ahead and close. All right, so once that is done, <clears throat> all right, and if we kind of just roll in here and get close enough, you're actually going to see that sort of glitter, sparkle, sort of metal flake in the paint. It's kind of cool, right? All right. And now we kind of want to put emphasis on where the actual winner is. Okay. So that's going to be the inside of this sort of cuff. So I'm going to just right click right on top of this face and I'm going to come down and pick on appearance. Okay. Once I go into appearance, maybe I want this little face here to just be red by itself. Okay, so now up here at the apply to at the top, you're going to see bodies and components is currently checked. Now we're going to come here and pick on faces, this little radio button. And now I can take my red and just take it and drag it right onto that face. So we can see at the inside of that is going to be red. Okay, maybe we want that to be on top as well. Let's see if we can get that on there. Sometimes we have to manipulate the view just a little bit or zoom in on it. So let's put red right on top as well. So it's going to put emphasis on where the actual winner is. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and close. All right, so we have our <clears throat> raised text, all right? Maybe we want to put some emphasis on that as well. All right, so we can do the exact same thing. Okay, so we can right-click on here, go into our appearance. Okay, and now maybe we can start changing up the colors on this. So maybe I want that to be green. So I'm going to say I want the faces, okay, of our text to be green. So I'm going to just drag this on here. Let's see if we can't jump out of this a little bit. Is green going to apply to that face? Doesn't look like it is, so I'm gonna go ahead and just close. Let's do that one more time. Let's right click, go to appearance. Okay, we're gonna go to faces. Let's drag green up in here so we can actually use it. Now let's try it again. So now we can go ahead and take that right to the face of the actual text, and let's just take our green and put it across, okay, every letter on that one for winter. Okay, so we have green on that one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and spin this. Maybe we can pick another color for this one. So I can see um, like blue hasn't been used. So let's go ahead and let's drag blue onto it. So I can drag blue up. And now I'm going to take blue and take it to the face of this letter. As well as this one. This one. And this one. So we'll have that winner done. Okay, so we have <clears throat> green, we have blue. Okay, so we have that one. All right, so maybe you're uh, starting to run out of colors and you're wanting to you know, create some new colors, no problem. We can right click on Carnival Game here at the top in the browser. We can come in here to appearance. And now what we're gonna do is uh, maybe want like a purple color. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with my blue and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say duplicate. Okay, so now here's our new duplicate. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say edit. Okay, and here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that one at the end. And then here where it says blue, I'm going to come in, clean that out, and I'm going to type in purple. And then here's how simple it is. Okay, once we have our new name on this, now we can use this scroll bar. We can pull this over till we get to our purples. And we can actually go and pick right on top of what we want that swatch example to be. And now we can say done. We can see that this is now changed to purple. Now we can kind of get close into these letters. And before we do that, make sure it's switched to faces. And now we can take that right there to the top of that. All right, so you're going to continue on with this, choosing the colors that you want. Okay, and drop those right on top of the actual text itself. Okay, to get the color that you're wanting. And like I said, you might have to do a little bit of orbiting, a little bit of zoom.
So let's get that purple on there. Here we go. All right. So we have blue, we have green, we have purple. Okay. And then we need one more color here. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that up to you guys to change that up. Okay. Get to what you're sort of wanting. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, take this back into our home view. All right. And then at the very end, all right, since we've already saved this, all we have to do is hit the save button. When this comes up, always just go ahead and accept user uh, saved and say OK. All right, so our board is actually done. Uh, that's going to be sort of our foundation with it. All right, so now we need to start creating our sides for this. OK, so the one thing we have to remember is that uh, the board is going to be uh, 21.75 inches, um, you know, for our width. OK, so we have to kind of remember that for our actual board sides. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and just create an all new design. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit a save at this point, and I'm going to call this my Carnival Game Side. Okay, so Carnival Game Side, all right, is currently uh, the design that we're in. It's been saved, and now I can come up, create a sketch. And in this case, I'm going to come here and work on this work plane. All right, and um, you know, it's something that you're going to start picking up. All right, the, the work plane that I was picking on that time, uh, that means when it comes into my assembly, it's going to be in this orientation, and it's just going to make a little bit more sense. So now we can go ahead and we can begin uh, creating the geometry that we're going to use. So once again, our sketch is going to start here from the origin. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sort of a triangular shape. All right, but I don't know if you noticed that when I was creating my, my triangle shape, Okay, once I pick from the origin and go over, you're going to see this little blue marker. Okay, that little blue marker is going to indicate to us that that's going to be horizontal. All right, and we want that to be horizontal. So go ahead and make sure when you're pulling this over, you are going to be looking for that marker. And then it's also going to be telling us, you know, in that little blue box above it, how, how far that's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this one up. Okay, in this case, we're now going to be seeing this little blue marker here. That's going to be indicating to us that that's going to be perpendicular. So we want to see that O snap. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pick that to place it. And now I'm going to go ahead and bring it back here to the origin to create that actual triangle. All right. So <clears throat> we've got our triangle uh, shape that we're wanting. Now we need to start indicating a couple things to it. Like we need to tell it like what the angle needs to be. And then we also need to be telling it, you know, what the width is going to be on top. So that, that board will fit right on top of it. All right. So we're going to come up here to dimension. We're going to pick the top line and then pick the bottom line. And then we're just going to pull this out. And now it's going to be telling us what that angle is going to be. So let's go ahead and just type in 30 for our angle and hit enter. And then the last thing we have to uh, explain to it is how far. <clears throat> and sorry about that. We got interrupted with um, announcements this morning. That was our very own Mrs. Sermon doing her pirate joke. Uh, so anyway, so we have our 30 degree uh, dimension. Now we need to come up and we need to dimension how far the top is. So I'm just going to pick on this line. Now when I pull up, if I go far enough, we're going to see this is not what we call an aligned dimension. This is a linear dimension. So we're going to get in closer to that because we want that to be parallel with it. That's what we call an aligned dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on that. And now this is the point when we be typing in the actual width of that board, which is 21.75. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So as soon as I add those two dimensions, we can see all of the color of our geometry is now black, which means it's fully constrained. So now we can go ahead and finish the sketch and we can now look at this in a home view. Let's go ahead and do a little extrusion here. We're going to use the same exact material. So this is going to be 0.75. All right. So that's going to be a plywood that's, you know, three quarter inch. And now let's go ahead and hit OK. <clears throat> All right. So we need to make sure this is actually finished plywood. So if you remember this from the last part, we're going to right click here at the top, come down here to physical material. And once we pick on physical material, we're going to come down here to wood. And it should be open from last time. OK. Now we can go ahead and find our finished plywood. We can drag and drop that right on top of it. And now we can go ahead and hit close. All right. <clears throat> so now we need to make this, um, you know, painted up for the carnival game. All right. So if I take a look at my last part, okay, the top of this was all in yellow. So I feel like uh, carnival games are a little bit flashy. So all sorts of colors are used with it. So I'm going to jump back into my carnival game side by picking on this tab. All right. <clears throat> it's already made of plywood. Now we're going to go ahead and paint this. So let's right click on it, go to appearance. Okay. And once we go into appearance, we still have our metal 
flake uh, paint that we can use. And I'm going to say the sides on this. I'm just going to drag on my blue, apply that blue to it. If we get in close enough, we can see that metal flake. Okay, so it's going to be sparkly and colorful. So now we can go ahead and hit save. All right, so our side is done. All right, so just that quick, um, we've we've created our uh, <clears throat> you know our board base and we've created the sides for it. Uh, so now we're going to be sort of ready to get things started, um, you know, with creating the actual assembly on this. And we're going to use our assembly um, to basically create the back, uh, and we can kind of place all that. So there we go. That is the first part of our carnival game, um, just by making the actual, uh, you know, board base itself as well as the sides. And we're getting things set up for the actual assembly. So there you go. Good luck.